Hello everybody, this is uh, Frank from Frank's Miniatures from the Netherlands. Um, this video is about two commissions I got from the Dutch IPMS, this is the International Plastic Modelers Society, to make and to review them in writing. Um, the first, these are two sets from Zvezda, uh, scale 1 and 72. This is the first one, Pants and Grenadiers in Anarak. So in a, with, with an overcoat, um, yeah, I will show you. Um, this was the the back side of the of the box. So here you can see what they are unpainted. If you build them, uh, five figures. Um, here one on the left is the same as that one, uh, standing alone. But I made a kind of uh, how do you call it in English? A vignette. Or in French, or but I think you know what I mean. Uh, it's a little diorama where they are all on one plaque. Um, well, I'll show it to you, and then I'll give some comments. This is him. I will zoom in a bit because it's very small. So, and because of the light, I don't think it really gets. Ah, there it is. So, because the light, um, it can be a bit dark. So, perhaps this helps. So, yeah, I think they're a bit dark on the camera. Um, but I will get them uh, a bit closer uh, later on. So, you can see here the five figures. I'll put this on behind. So you can see the five figures, and what did I do? Uh, used a lot of green, as you can see. <laughs> um, the one, the two guys who were the same, I exchanged the arm with the ammunition case, which the machine gunner uh, holds in uh, on the illustrations. But I changed that. It's also not normal that a machine gunner uh, carries his own ammunition um, boxes. Usually, it, wa it was uh, one of the of the team members which did it. Um, what else? It was a nice set. You could simply build it, no problem. I was a bit surprised to see a uh, Sturmgewehr in combination with an MG34. Uh, with frontline troops, so this so this is this is a this is a scene that because the Sturmgewehr can only be late uh, 43 or 1944, but then the frontline troops were weren't having uh, weren't operating with the MG 34 only in emergencies, uh, mostly uh, uh, the troops behind the front lines would have it or. Um, uh, on uh, vehicles, so that's a bit uh, strange, but whatever. It's a nice set. Um, yeah, I put it on um, on a base which I had left from Warlord figures. You can see it here. That's that's a nice shape. Uh, I have a layer around, so I used it. And then uh, you can see normally the base would be this form. Uh, with the tank tracks, so the tank tra keeping the tank tracks here, uh, I thought was very important for this set, for the diorama. So you can see, I kept them here, and I extended them a little bit. I uh, put on some uh, some stone. These are in reality uh, cork, uh, bits of cork of a uh, coffee placer. How do you call it? What you put on your coffee mug. Uh, painted them uh, anthracite and then highlighted them. And you can see here some grass, which I put some washers on. So they really look like a bit muddy. You can also see now from now from up close that I that there are different kinds of green. This is army green from uh, army painter, and here you can see the different 
types of green and brown are used on the camouflage. These are from Vallejo. And then you can also see, I hope you can see, that the helmet straps are also on it. There are eyes on it, uh, white and, uh, and the pupil. And what did I use for the helmet straps? There I cheated a little bit, because I didn't do that with, um, with a brush. But what I use is this. I saw that earlier on, some time ago, uh, on YouTube with someone who did it. Uh, it is pigment, really important pigment. So uh, that this is a, this is a 0 0.05 millimeters Stadler. It's a really fine, but look out if you use it, let it dry for a couple of hours. Otherwise, really hours, no, not minutes, hours, so that you don't mush it if you go over it with something else that you mush it uh, in your uh, in, with with um, with your paint so that's very important okay just uh, switch to the other one because i'm talking too much and the other one was this one so this one Volkssturm berlin 1945 so um, what you see here on the front is not exactly what you get um, in the package. You can see this is what you get in the package. So you can see here uh, two children with Panzerfaust, uh, an, ad an adult with, I believe that is an Austrian submachine gun, submachine pistol, I believe, yeah, submachine pistol. And there you see another young guy with um, with a mach machine pistol, especially made for the Volkssturm. I believe VG5, perhaps, so from my head. And here you see another adult who has a gorget, so a metal breast sheet, uh, or a, a, in German a ringkragen, which was also provided to the Feldgendarmerie, so the military police. Uh, from Wehrmacht, Luftwaffe, Waffen, SS, etc. If you saw these, you were, no, that's, these were not fine guys. So, and they had absolute power over all personnel. So, it, and for instance, an, uh, an Wehrmacht Feldgendarmerist, even, even an ordinary one, could even arrest a general if he wanted to. So, and they did. So if one was on the on fleeing, then they could arrest him and shoot him, no problem. This is what I made. These are the figures. You can see I put them in a little diorama with behind uh, an earth wall with the sandbags and some sticks and some rocks and this beam. I blackened that. That was a a match. Very simple. So very basic. But you can make a lot of nice things with it. So the the armbands. So from the Volkssturm, the, the red, white, and black were painted on by hand. So no decals in this. Okay, well, this is it. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, if you do, please put the like button. Or if you haven't, please subscribe. Um, but only if you want to see more. And uh, thank you for everybody who already subscribed and liked with the other uh, videos. Uh, very much appreciated. Also the nice remarks. And uh, well, I hope this helps you with um, how you build your own models. Okay, this was it. Bye-bye.